In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Word of God, come down on earth, living rain from heaven descending, touch our hearts, and bring to birth faith and hope and love and ending. And we know that God's word does rain down on us. Without it, we have nothing. We would be nothing. We could not grow in faith and in hope and in love. Yet when we look at the psalm, we see that something else is supposed to rain down. May the king be like rain that falls on the mown grass, like showers that water the earth. The way the Bible brings all these different threads together and uses common words to talk about disparate things is a source of never-ending joy and also puzzlement to many Christians as we read through and try to figure out, well, if he said that there and if he said that there, how did these two things come together? But here, in a lot of different ways, God talks about how he blesses the earth and all that's in it by raining down some sort of blessings from above. But specifically, when he rains his word down, he does so as a blessing to his people. It's not like the rain at the time of Noah, with the floods coming up, the ground cracking open, and the geysers shooting out. This is the kind of rain that a desert country craves. And even any agricultural country wants the rain the right amount at the right time, so the grass grows, the crops grow, the animals are able to find something to eat and to drink, and the owners want that then because they support themselves and their families and help God to answer many people's prayers for daily bread by what they do on their own places. Here now then, the psalmist says that the king shall reign. We're used to hearing the other kind of reign in connection with a king, right? Elizabeth had a long reign as Queen of England, just recently ended. And unless Charles lives well into his hundreds, his reign is not going to be anywhere near as long. But that's not the reign that's here. The reign that's here is just what falls out of the clouds, like the weatherman's been promising that we're going to get tomorrow and Saturday and Monday, and maybe we will, maybe we won't, because until earthly rain comes, we don't know if it's really going to make it to us or not. And how much, whether it be too much or too little, at the right time or wrong, it's out of our control. But when we trust in God's rain coming down on us, we can trust that it's all going to come at the proper time. And so also, when his king rains down, he is not dumping himself out to destroy the people under his realm. He's not trying to wash away all of those who trust in his rule, but rather he is trying to do the same thing that the clouds from heaven do, to bring something of a blessing to the people who are underneath him. May he be like rain that falls on mown grass, like showers that water the earth. May the king provide sustenance and life to his people. And this Strictly looking at the kings of Israel is a good thing, isn't it? Whether it's David or Solomon or one of the others, you want the king or whatever ruler you have over you at any particular time to take care of you, not to take advantage of you. You may not want to be babied along the way, but you want to have some idea that foreign invaders aren't going to come in and take everything away from you, that wicked people in your midst will be caught and punished. And as much as possible, will be stopped before they can exercise full wickedness. And again, sometimes that happens, and sometimes it doesn't. But this reign of this king goes beyond that. Because everything that he brings is beneficial, and it comes at exactly the right time and the right amount for all the right reasons. In his days, may the righteous flourish and peace abound till the moon be no more. Already above that, it talked about the time when there will be no more moon as well as no more sun. Like us, like all people who pay attention to God's word, the psalmist here knows that all of this is going to end. And the king who is sitting in Jerusalem at that time 
will live so long he'll die. And if he has children, then they will rule and live so long, and then they will die, and that will continue on. But finally, it will all end. But before that happens, there's going to come a king who is going to go beyond the regular standard blessings that any good king of Israel is going to bring to God's chosen people. And that king is the one who comes through the announcement of the angel, through the birth in Bethlehem, and through the whole story that we're getting ready to hear and to celebrate once again. But the story isn't over, is it? It started in the beginning with those first words that we have in Genesis. And this story doesn't end even when the sun and the moon are gone because we have an eternal king. And his blessings are rained down on his people, not just as long as they live on this earth, but as they live also in the new heavens and the new earth. In fact, it's better than ever. Because nothing is going to get in the way of us receiving it fully and completely and absolutely reacting appropriately. How many blessings has God rained down on you? Can you take stock of what you've gotten this past week, month, or year? Look back through your entire life. Children, grandchildren, various wonderful friends who you might have. How many good meals have you eaten just in the past few days? Or how many frozen pizzas have you had to eat because that's all you had time for? But we know that even a frozen pizza is a blessing to those who don't have anything at all. And an old car, when you're trying to get any distance at all, is a lot better than no car at all. God rains so many blessings down on us that we take for um, granted and also that we take advantage of. People are given good things by God and they squander them or they misuse them. God gives people wonderful minds quite often. But yet, we know that those minds aren't always used in accordance with the word and the will of God, correct? I mean, they even had a TV show called Criminal Minds. Really smart people doing really wicked things, taking the blessing that God gave them of intellect and twisting it to their own purposes. Physical strength, the same way. Some people get big and strong and they help others. Others get big and strong and they hurt others. Some get big and strong and they just work for themselves. God has been raining these blessings down ever since the beginning. Here, have a tree. Eat and eat and eat and live and live and live. And don't eat that tree. He gave them one tree for their lifelong, everlasting benefit, and one tree as an act of worship to show God that they respected his word, that they honored it, and that they recognized that one of his blessings was a chance to respond to him in faith and love, not only by doing what he wanted, but also by not doing what he didn't want. And how long did that last? They took this beautiful tree with wonderful fruit on it. Bible doesn't say that it's like a poison ivy plant with nasty tasting berries on it. It's beautiful. It's delightful. Smells good. Tastes good. But it wasn't the blessing that they were supposed to claim. We mishandle, misappropriate our blessings. And for that, we have to repent. Again, this day, this week, this month, this year, all the way back through our days on earth, we have found ways to misuse these gifts, but God keeps sending them. And he rains down on us then more blessings all the time. And literally, he takes the rain that falls from the heavens and he attaches his word to it and doesn't just wash away the dirt that's sitting around here, doesn't just fill the ponds and the rivers, but he washes away sin with plain old ordinary fall from the cloud water. And in that way too, this final and ultimate king rains down because it is Jesus who gave us baptism to wash away our sins, to bring us into his father's house. 
He rains down from heaven as he comes to us in the flood of baptism and as he continues to come as we confess our sins and day by day, week by week, month by month, confess them and have them washed away again. He is the water of life. And when we drink of him, we will live, not just now, but ever and ever. And not just an enduring life, not just a one foot in front of the other, aching and moaning and groaning every step away, but a life finally that we want of leaping and skipping and hopping, pure, unbridled joy. The king shall reign, but the king already reigns. God hasn't ever withheld all of his blessings from the earth. He apportions them where and when he will. Just like we hear of the Spirit blowing where and when he will, so God gives different gifts to different people at different times, but all people receive the gift of that came first, the gift of life. And they're born into a world where God reigns and God rules whether people want it, whether they want to respond to it or not. And God will continue to reign that out on us and for us. He will continue to work through the civil authorities and through his church to rule and order the people on this earth to line us up so we can come in here and receive his blessings and to line us up out there so we aren't driving in the wrong lane of the road and running into one another. He establishes order, not to hinder us, but to protect us and to guide us. Just like when the rains come down, they don't just splash out all over the place. They find their water courses. They go in the channels that are laid out for them. And so in God's word of order, he puts us in the channels where he will have us flow. In through these doors, receiving more of his blessings, and then out again, bringing that water of life along with us. So that the thirsty among us can also have a chance to drink, to know God, and to live. May the king be like the rain that falls on the mown grass in this well, there may be a few smells in the world that are better, but fresh rain after a long dry smell is certainly one of the best ones I can think of. Showers that water the earth. May the king be that. And the king says, I certainly will. That's like when Jesus comes in on Palm Sunday and they say Hosanna, which basically means Jesus us. And Jesus says, I certainly will. When we ask our king to pour out his blessings on us, we find out that he's already been throwing them out hand over fist. Like the sower who chucks out the seed and just waits for it to grow. But then also, like we have in birthdays and holidays, special gifts for special people at special times. Every one of you shares all the great gifts of God, but each one of you has special gifts that God has given you. With the people who are in your life, with the skills and talents he has given you. Some people can hardly put water on a stove without scorching it. Others can make a banquet out of a second-rate garden and an old, tough piece of beef. You have gifts that vary among all of you, but all of you have the special gift of forgiveness, the gift of life, the gift of salvation, the gift that you can live for yourself and the gift you can live for others. And all those other gifts God has given you also. As the king rains his gifts on you, he says, don't hoard them, don't be a miser, don't be like that guy who wants to build a bigger barn, but rather take them out and use them in the world. You who can play music, play it. You who can sing music, sing it. You who can cook, cook. You who can clean, clean. You who can love, you who can care. You can, who can be there for others in their times of need, be there. How much time has God given you already and how much more will he give you? You know the first, you don't know the second. But you know that until your day's end, God will continue giving you people in that time, blessings in that time and opportunities to bring them together, to worship the king who rains down on you, who refreshes and restores you, so that you can then be a blessing and a refreshment and a restoration for others. Maybe a physical gift, maybe a spiritual gift, but your life among other people is part of God's gift to them. This is our life together as part of God's gift to each one of us. Every one of us benefits because of the people who are sitting around us today, those who are here on Sunday, those who show up occasionally, everyone in your family, 
all those among your friends, the people you have in chance encounters are all God's blessings. And every one of them who blesses you, remember you are also there as a blessing to them. May the God who continually rains down his blessings on you give you opportunity and the desire to rain down those blessings on others. In the name of our King, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace that surpasses understanding keep you in Jesus Christ. Amen.